Join us right now for a closer look at the market, the Fed, and so much more. David Rubenstein, Carlisle Group's co-founder and co-chairman. David, it's great to see you as always. Uh, I think I'm going to get a chance to see you in Aspen at the Aspen Institute next week. Uh, but uh, let's talk about where the markets are right now um, and specifically sort of where you think the Fed really is. I think the Fed made it clear to everybody that uh, interest rates are not going down this year. I think the market futures had anticipated a decline perhaps by the end of this year in interest rates or beginning of it. And uh, Jay Powell's statement in front of Congress this week uh, made it clear that at least uh, for the end of the year, till the end of the year, you're not going to see any rate decreases. So the markets are adjusting to that. I think uh, the, the market got ahead of the Fed, I think, a little bit. And the market was anticipating some rate cuts. And I think Jay Powell made it clear that's not going to happen this year. Are you in the camp, David? What's, I don't know what the Carlisle House view is, but when you guys sit around on Monday mornings and talk about where rates will be, you know, six months out, 12 months out, is your view that there's only two more rate increases? Do you think there's more to go? We've talked to, to folks on both sides of that debate. Right. The conventional wisdom today is you're probably going to have two quarter uh, point increases between now and the end of the year. That's the conventional wisdom, and we're probably with the conventional wisdom. But that assumes there's no big problem in China, no big problem, again, in the Ukraine-Russia war, no exogenous things we can't anticipate. <laughs> But that's what the conventional wisdom is. But as some people have always said, the conventional wisdom in Washington is almost always wrong. But that's the conventional wisdom. But, well, but so if, if you say it's always wrong, and I know you're saying this is your <laughs> conventional wisdom, too, do you, do you have a view? Well, you say yourself, view is I'm going to lean one way, more one way than the other? Well, you have to go with what the conventional wisdom is at this point, because we don't know what exogenous events could occur. But based on everything we know today, assuming nothing terrible happens overseas and no big calamities, if the Fed has made it clear, they're going to increase interest rates about two more times, probably 25 basis points apiece. And then next year, they'll look at uh, beginning a decrease, but no guarantees there either. Do you say, to yourself, as, a, as somebody who invests in the private markets and, and a lot of credit markets these days, do you say to yourself, I want to be, I want to be buying now at these rates because they're only going to go up from here? I mean, this goes again to trying to decide where you think things are really headed. Right. Or do you say, I got to harvest now well, and sell? The greatest fortunes are made by professional investors when things are, you know, are troublesome. Right now, there is a lot of complications in the market. Some people are very worried about the real estate market, the real estate debt market. Uh, there are some challenges there, and we haven't seen them all uh, come to the fore yet. We'll see some more in the next couple of months. So, yes, it's a good time to invest, prepare, assuming you're prepared to hold on. If you want a quick flip, that's probably not a great thing to do right now. But if you're in the business we are, which is making long-term investments, now is probably a pretty good time to invest because there's not as much competition. It's harder to get deals done. If you go through and work the deal through and you get it done, you get it financed, you're probably going to do okay in four or five years. Uh, the markets show that when, when private equity firms are looked at, what, what are the best funds, what are the best vintages, almost always it's at times when there's economic trouble. And so right now there's are some you, trouble. Go ahead. Given what you're, given what you're seeing, though, uh, among your, your your portfolio companies, and this goes maybe to, it's almost like a Barry Sternlich question. We just had him on uh, earlier right. this week. He thinks things have slowed down way more than the Fed believes they have, and that his data is, is much more up to date, if you will, than what he thinks of as the lagging data that the Fed gets. What, what, is the, what does the Carlisle okay. data show you? We have data on several hundred companies we own, and we uh, look at that and we compare it to how the economy usually does, and we actually sometimes send that to the Fed as a way for them to have additional information. Um, our data does not show a recession anytime soon. Uh, the most, this is the most anticipated recession in history, but it hasn't happened yet. And our data does not show a recession uh, coming in the United States in the near future. Now, of course, things could change. But right now, our data is reasonably okay. We don't see decline in consumer sales. We see enormous spending in, in uh, things like uh, concerts and hotels and restaurants, things like that. So we, don't, we just don't see it right now in the data. What looks cheap to you right now? Where you say, okay, maybe it's time to dip our foot. You know, would you go buy real estate in San Francisco right now? Would you buy a regional bank? Would you, I mean, are there play, or, or even credit in some of those types of markets? Everything is the price. Tell me what the price is, and I'll tell you why we do it, for sure. Uh, take uh, commercial real estate. We all know that fewer people are going into offices than that used to be the case. So if you go to big office buildings in New York City, you're going to see people there maybe two or three days a week, if you're lucky. Now, obviously, some firms try to get their firm people back every day, but really, two or three days a week is what you're seeing. At some point, 
at some point, people are going to say we need less space, and at some point, the, the value of these buildings is going to go down. There's no doubt about it. And so you're going to see some real estate debt is going to be for sale at discounts to what it is today. That's probably the biggest opportunity over the next two or three years is discounted real estate debt in large commercial uh, office buildings in, in big cities. Would you make a bet, though? I mean, this goes to the question about cities and, and specific cities. San Francisco is a city we talk a lot about on this broadcast. Uh, we right. talk about Seattle, which has also been challenged. Um, Chicago has been challenged. Are, are there certain cities you think um, are sort of too, uh, you know, too hot to handle? You know, occasionally, whenever things go down in a, in a city for a while, people say that depth of cities is upon us. But the truth is, large cities are still where people like to come and work, particularly younger people. And I, I don't think these big cities are going away anytime soon. Clearly, San Francisco's had its, I'd say, public relations problems, for sure. But I don't think San Francisco is going away. Uh, prices in real estate are going to go down there for a while. But it's still, uh, you know, a major city in the United States. It's not going away. I don't think people are moving to farms and to get out of San Francisco. A public relations problem because people actually talk about what's happening there. That's that's public relations. Well, there's no doubt that there's challenges in San Francisco, but it's not like everybody's moving out of San Francisco to Texas. No, I know, uh, but there's some serious challenges in a lot of cities, David. Well, it's sure, not but look, PR. I mean, what if they, they're if always, they, they're they always, had better crisis PR people, there would be. The problem would go away. I didn't say that, but I'd say that. And take you live in New York City, or you work in the New York City area. So New York City was thought to be dead uh, at the time of the uh, at the at the coronavirus. People said this city's not coming back. It now looks reasonably vibrant. There are challenges for sure. We don't, obviously, there are a lot of homeless people here in Washington D.C., uh, San Francisco. We haven't solved that problem, but I don't think cities are going away.